Good morning. Depending on what country you're in, depending on what time of horizon you're in, this is another day. Let's think outside the box and throw the box away. My friends, I want to speak to your soul and spirit again about something that the Lord has put upon my heart. Something that you may be going through. Something that we usually go through as long as we are on planet Earth. The fact that we are in, in these dispensable bodies, many times we find ourselves with challenges that are beyond our redress. And even as we begin to go through these challenges, the struggles to survive, the idea to compete for tomorrow, to make ends meet, we may force ourselves or we may be forced in circumstances that are beyond our natural abilities. And even those who are surrounding us may not really understand. Several times you see people walking on the streets and they're talking to themselves and they're not even aware that they're talking to themselves. People get accidents, they're crossing, they're not even aware that there's a car coming. People die in the sleep. People have heart attacks, non-communicable diseases, depression, every kind of faintings, illusions, torment, psychological, physical, emotional, every kind of problem. Whether planet or unplanned and sometimes you may end up resorting to some kind of remedy and if you misguide it you may end up going to people who may give you false advice and I'm talking about the so many medias that people run for refuge because of the inability to wait upon that unique moment where the supernatural, the divine intervention of God, and I'm talking about Almighty God, because there are many semblances of God. Listen, when Moses was in the Pharaoh's chambers, he was able to throw down his stick, and the stick turned into a snake. Guess what? The magicians who were working for the Pharaoh say, that's a simple thing. Did exactly the same thing that Moses did. Meaning that there are many people in different places who will masquerade, giving you false hope in the name of perhaps Chitole and Sigo, in the name of sacrifice element B or child A, bewitch so and so. Those are situations that force us because of the desperacy, because of the desire to have the things that we need, perhaps, in our hearts. Listen, when you read the good book of First Samuel, chapter 1, verse 17, I'm here to speak to you and to encourage you that God hears irrespective of what you're going through. And God is mindful that that circumstance that is partaking of you is something that you can be able to deal with. Faith is the belief. Faith is the calling of those things that are not as if they are. And as long as you learn to exercise faith, listen, Without faith, it is impossible. The word of God says, without faith, it is impossible to please God. So you must learn that this issue called faith, calling on things that are not as if they are, saying it will come to pass even when you see nothing. Last time I told you, Isaac, 
in the scriptures so when it was pure desert and he harvested much now i'm telling you today first samuel chapter 1 verse 17 there was a lady called hannah hannah was one of the wives of, of elkanah and for several years she desired to have a baby but she couldn't have a baby for whatever reason you may have a dream in your heart and you're like oh my goodness for a long time i've been craving for this i've been asking god for this i've been asking god for a promotion i've been asking god for a job i've been asking god for school fees i've been asking god for 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 to pay my debts i've been asking god for a miracle of a baby for a marriage for a relationship for a good man for a good wife i've been asking god for for healing but for a long time and because of that desperation and because of the so many things and the semblance of people who are able to masquerade like they can do the thing for you but instead give you fake things like the false magicians who are able to turn the sticks into a snake but remember moses snake later ate all those snakes god has the ability to convert your situation into a miracle as long as you focus in the right direction so the question is what is the right direction this lady hannah many times interceded and went in the presence of god to the extent that even the prophet who was the, who was the custodian of the church at that place a said you woman what are you doing? I see you here every day. You know, there's a time when you begin to, to, to cry to God that even words disappear. That you cannot say anything anymore to God because of the pain and the desperation. You, you can't even pronounce the word God anymore because the tears have overwhelmed you. The crying has overwhelmed you. The desperation has overwhelmed you. So you, you, you can't even mama. You, you just, you just be there speechless. It happened to Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane when he cried and the, and, the, and the fear was tremendous. The satanic of death was on the door to the extent that his sweat began turning into blood. Jesus began sweating blood. That's the kind of desperation that I'm talking about. The desperation that when he was crucified on the cross, and nails at him, and he cried, Eloi, Eloi, Rabastabani, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Such is the time <clears throat> that you may be going through. Such is the time that Hannah was going through. And the people around her, including the prophet of God, said, This man, this lady, is drunk. How can you come in the house of the Lord? drunk you murmuring we can't understand you so you some life has caused you to do things that the people around you are saying you're saying there's something wrong with you you're mentally incapacitated you're bazak you're not right upstairs your material blangata has a problem but you and only you knows what you are going through only you knows why you you can't sleep only you knows why you, you you, you, you know, you, you're so desperate. You, why you, your body is losing weight. Only you knows why. You can't cry anymore. You can't shout anymore. You can't dance anymore. The pain is too much. Too much that you can't bear it anymore. Listen, my friend. There is a bow in Kiliath to make the wounded all. There is a bow in Kiliath to heal the sin sick soul. That is what the word of God was saying. Is there no bow? God has seen that. That's what El told Hannah. He said, because you have explained to me that I'm not drunk. I am just desperate. I'm crying to Abba Father. I'm saying, Abba Father, Eloi, Eloi, Rabastasani. Why have you forsaken me? Because his, her co-wife was taunting her every day. Every time she goes back, she could see this baby crying, 
the, the, the co-wife enjoying having fun with the kids. Maybe that's what's happening. Every time you go back, you see your neighbor has power in their house. Your neighbor has a car. Your neighbor has got a second car. Your neighbor's kids are going to school. Your little sister or your cousin is getting weighted. Your brothers, your cousins who have graduated, whatever challenge you're going through. Some have gone abroad, some have got beautiful things and you're like, Oh God, have you forsaken me? Have you erased my name? Have you erased my name? Am I of no history anymore? Those are the kind of people I'm speaking to because that is for you, my friend. God has heard your cry. God has heard your cry. And I'm speaking it from my spirit because he has heard your cry. You don't need a prophet to lay their hands on you. You don't need to teach it all and sequel. You just need to believe that God Almighty, who listens in silence, has heard your cry. That is what he told the prophet. You remember the scripture? When one of the kings had sinned, and the prophet came to him and told him, Your days are numbered. And the, prophet, and the king turned to the wall and said, My God, throughout my hours I have done A, B, C, D. My days are gone, O oh God. And just after a moment, the prophet came back and said, The Lord has heard your cry. And he has extended your days. My friend, God has heard your cry. God has heard your tears. God has heard your disparity. And that dream in you is going to explode. That desire in you is going to explode. You will tell me. You will call me and say, Brother Isaac, you told me. I thought it was only a joke. The scripture says, When the Lord comes on you, it will be like you were dreaming. When the scripture says, When the devil when the enemy comes upon you like a flood, then the Spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard. My friend, God is lifting up a standard. The challenges are going to be forsaken, regardless of how big your debt is in the bank. Do not commit suicide. Do not go for witchcraft. Believe in God. Keep doing it. Keep trusting God like Hannah did. Listen, and now you have to learn to channel that weakness. That, that negative energy into positive energy. Paul and Silas were incarcerated for a long time. Did you know what they did? They sat in the prison with the chains and chapters upon them. They were not even concerned whether or not they had a pain or had a good lawyer to come and get them out. They decided to worship them. To say, Father, we thank you. You are worthy of all praise. Listen. There are times when you have to begin to rejoice in your circumstances, regardless. Because your circumstances is simply a manifestation of the physical. But the supernatural will come and break the physical. That is what you're going to do, my friend. Paul and Salah begin to worship God. And guess what? The shackles broke off their feet and hands. And the angel opened the door. And they walked out of the south without anybody coming into it. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were asked for several times to worship the idol. They said, we will not worship that idol. Some of you are being called by your bosses. You're, you're going to sleep with me or you're going to lose your job. You're going to bribe this way or you're not going to get the job. You're going to kill or you're not going to do this. Stay firm. Do the right thing. Follow your conscience. Follow the will of God. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, even when they got hold of them and the king threw, threw them into the pit of hungry lions, starved for a number of days. Guess what happened? They said, let it be known unto you, O king, that even if the lions consume us, we will not bow down to that image. Come to that level, that let it be known, O you circumstance, <coughs> that even if my boy, like Job used to say, the time when Job was going through trouble, even if my body, once come now on my body, even if my own wife has told me, forsake God, cast God and die, your tribulations are too many. Even if whatever encompasses me looks muddy, 
Even if my family doesn't believe in me, even if my children don't believe in me, even if my country doesn't believe in me, I will not bow my knee to bow. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego did that. And when they were thrown into the pit, get what? The lions there. Even your enemies are going to force you to councils and put you in corners. But when they know very well that this guy is likely to survive, <coughs> but let's test them. Let's put them there. Let's test them. Let's put them there. Because they are also forced by, you know, people who are, who, who hate you. Your very boss may not be hating you, but they have got these people who come around them and give them words. Do this. <coughs> He's going to forsake you. He's going to overtake you. So because of them, they force the king or whoever has authority to put in that circumstance. But deep within this person's circumstance, heart, they know this guy is not a very bad guy. This lady is not a very bad lady. But they surrender you to God. It happened. Pilate was put in a circumstance. Pilate's wife came to Pilate and told Pilate, I have had a dream that this guy is a holy man. Please do not kill him. Pilate said, you Jews and Pharisees and teachers of the law, this man is innocent. If he's calling himself the king of kings, that's okay with me. He said, my friend Pilate, we want him dead. Pilate said, bring water, wash his hands clean. He said, let the sins, let the blood and the torment be visited upon you and not me. He cleaned his hands. There are people in authority who have done that. And that's what I was telling you. Shebrak, Mr. Jeremiah Donego. The king said, let's get them, throw them there. But he couldn't sleep because he was like, oh God, deep within me, oh God, I don't know if this guy's gonna make it. Guess what? In the morning, the king came to the pillar and popped and said, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, are you there? And they said, oh God, oh master, oh Lord, oh king, we're here. And he said, wait a minute, but amidst you, I put only three. I see another man walking among you. God is going to demonstrate himself in your circumstances. God is going to begin to walk with you in your pain, in your tribulation, in your examination failures, in your job failure, in your business failure. The people begin to look at you and say, wait a minute, we're seeing another person. We thought you put him on there, but we see another person. That's the kind of faith I'm talking about. Have faith in God. Faith will move mountains. Jesus said, even if you have faith as little as a small seed, you will say to that mountain, O oh, ye mountain, be moved, and it will be transplanted from this place to another place. Listen, my friends, we are positioning ourselves as the leaders of tomorrow. Whether you pray about it or not, whether you fast about it or not, you're going to hear it of us. You're going to hear of sweet genes. You're going to hear of let's think out of the box. You're going to hear of rebels, legal rebels. You're going to hear of incredible jurisprudence. We are here to conquer the world. We're not dying today. We are living for tomorrow. Tomorrow is part of us. We're going to move. We're going to change. Be part of the dream. God bless you. And thank you for your attention.